Okay. Hello, everyone. Happy May 4th. And welcome to our webinar on getting started with your forms for Salesforce plan. My name is Ryan Jorgensen, and I am a customer success enablement manager here at Formstack. And today I'm also joined uh, by our customer success manager, Andrew Masson. Hey, Andrew. Uh, now, whether you're brand new to Formstack or you're an existing customer, just looking for a refresher on our forms for Salesforce platform, this is a great webinar for that. Uh, for our agenda today, Andrew is gonna be taking us through some use cases uh, he sees with his customers, as well as a live demo, where we're gonna be going over navigating and best practices for using our Forms for Salesforce product. Uh, just some housekeeping items before we get started. This webinar is gonna be recorded and a follow-up email that contains the recording will be sent back out over the next 24 hours. Uh, but the recording will also be on our registration page if you need to reference anything that we've gone over today. Also, we'd love to hear about what you came here to learn. Uh, so we will have a poll that we're gonna be posting shortly just to get a better idea of what brought you to this webinar. That poll can be found over on that right-hand sidebar and like I said, will be open over the next little while. Now, if at any point during our webinar, you do have a question concerning the content that we're gonna be going over today, or just in general about our Forms for Salesforce product, we do have a Q&A tab that can also be located over there on the right-hand side. I'll be taking a look at these questions periodically throughout the presentation as they come in. And if we do have time after our demo, I will try our best to answer any of the questions that are still up or may need further explanation. Now, if for some reason we're unable to get to your question, we will also go over some great resources for you at the end to help with learning our products. Uh, if you do have a specific question regarding your account, we would ask you to connect with your account manager or your customer success manager, depending on your plan and if you qualify for one. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna pass things over to Andrew and uh, to talk through some use cases and that uh, live demo of building a form in Salesforce. Awesome, thank you, Ryan. I will share my screen now, make sure I've got the right one. All right, and thank you all again uh, for joining us here live today. I just wanna reiterate a couple of things that Ryan briefly mentioned. I'm going to be going through this pretty quickly, but we will be sending you a recording here within 24 hours, not just with the recording, but with also some additional resources to make sure you're still set up for success. That way too, if uh, I'm going too quickly for the you to follow along here, you'll still have the opportunity to watch through it. You can pause, rewind, rewatch any of those things that you need to um, on your own time. Now, Ryan also already briefly shared an agenda. So I have an agenda within the agenda just to quickly unpack things a little bit more of what we're covering here during this live demo. Uh, I am going to be talking quickly about just some common use cases that I see. It is certainly not all encompassing. And another disclaimer I want to give before going too far into this is if you're using Salesforce and you're not using our form stack for Salesforce application yet, you probably should be. You certainly could be, that's for sure. Um, if you need to gather data, whether it's internal, external, anything along those lines, you can benefit from this application. I'll show you a little bit more of those use cases, how you all can use it. Um, I'm also going, again, going to show you a demo of this in action. I have a live form, so you can see it. So you can see what it will look like to the end user filling out these forms. And then I'm gonna show you how to build your own. That said, let's talk very high level. What are some of the use cases I see with my customers? And again, this is a small fraction of the people that I'm working with every single day. But some of the common industries that I'm working with using this application, I work with people in the tech or software space. They're using it for lead generation, gathering sales quotes. Again, I'm not going to go through every single one of these that are listed. You can read through this if your industry happens to be up here or you just want some ideas. But if you're using this more, uh, maybe you're on an H. HR, recruiting or, or IT type team, 
see it all the time for IT requests, for applications, time off, employee recognition. Higher education is using it throughout the student journey as well as the faculty adjustments, some of those internal requests. And healthcare is another common one. And in fact, our use case today is going to be talking about a healthcare use case. We're gonna be talking about updating medical records. But I wanna re-emphasize, if you're not in healthcare, that does not mean this use case isn't still relevant for you. If you need to update information, maybe it's for your staff, maybe it's for clients or leads that you're working with, whoever you happen to be working with, if you need to update information or just simply gather it, you can probably benefit from a very similar use case. I'm also going to try and keep things vague enough or highlight where the, um, where the vernacular might be slightly different depending on the industry. But in general, the structure, the process, the build, all of that stuff is largely going to be the same regardless of your industry and your specific use case. So I mentioned we're talking today about updating medical records and the full situation of this is we're gonna say you've sent out a patient's uh, unique pre-filled link. One of the awesome things about this Salesforce application that most other form solutions just don't offer is we do allow you to have pre-filled information. They're pulling from their Salesforce record and it could be record. You can pull it from any number of objects. If you're not savvy with Salesforce, I'll kind of talk a little bit more about objects and records, that stuff as we're going through that. But situation here, we've sent them their own unique pre-filled link. They click on it. Their information's already populated for the most part, but then based on some of the information they're updating or selecting, we're gonna see different fields show and disappear. Uh, it then is going to either create a new record or in this case, since it's a pre-fill, it's gonna update their contact information. It's also gonna trigger a Salesforce case. So that way someone else internally knows I need to follow through with this case and it's assigned accordingly. And as I mentioned, we do have dynamic pre-fill here at your disposal as well. So, um, again, as I'm going through this, it will be pretty quick. You will receive the recording, but please ask your questions in the chat as soon as they come to mind. Ryan's still on hand. He's still going to be answering those questions as soon as possible. So let me change where I'm sharing and get into the live demo here for you. So we have, oh, I believe this is the right one. Forgive me. There we go, I need window, not tab. Okay, perfect. So here's just a very, very brief example. This is a very simple form. You can do way more complex use cases than what I'm walking you through right here. You could have this connected to flow. You could have it updating parent, child, grandchild objects, creating multiple things if you want to. You have all kinds of rules that are showing, hiding, populating things. We're going to keep this pretty simple today because this is a getting started webinar, right? But if you do have a more complex use case, again, reach out to your account manager or customer success manager. We're happy to help walk you through um, how you could possibly use this. So again, this is the end patient's view, right? You've sent them a link to update their information. You already have some of their information on file. So they open up this form. They're going to see your branding up at the very top. They're going to see their name. May the fourth be with you. Had to throw that in today. Uh, just briefly pulled into their um, contact info. We have phone number, email address, home address. If they go in and update or change any of this information, it will also update in Salesforce accordingly. So super easy, but it saves time so they don't have to go in, manually type in additional information. I just went to the doctor last week, had to put my name and contact information on four different paper forms. It, it was horrible. So this helps alleviate the need to do that, right? Um, again, basic contact info, another feature of this, and um, our core forms tool does do this as well, but for what you can have is uh, placeholder text. So they haven't typed anything in here, but maybe you wanna say, here's an example of what this might be. You want a little explainer. Maybe for phone number, you want to show them the specific format you'd like the phone number input into, or great, you can do all of that right here. But as soon as they start typing in their value or reason for today's visit, you'll see that pre um, or that um, pre fill text is not there. We or the placeholder text, I should say, and now it's going to be whatever their value is. And then at the very bottom here, it looks like the form ends. It's actually not the case. We want to see, do they have any known allergies? If they check the box saying yes, which again, this doesn't have to be a box. It could be yes, no, could be any number of things. 
Now all of a sudden we see we have rules on the back end saying now we need additional information. We need to know what those medications are, what is the reaction that they're receiving, right? So we're gonna say Tylenol because I don't feel like failing uh, to spell acetaminophen right now. And what are the reactions they have? We're just gonna say hives and maybe some abdominal pain. Uh, do they have any food allergies? We'll go ahead and hit yes. Same deal, we can have this for, frankly, just about as many fields as you'd like, some if-then kind of logic and rules. We'll say they're allergic to tree nuts. And this one, we'll say wheezing and swelling. Now, you'll notice here I have multiple choice options here in a couple different formats. We do allow you a few different ways to have multiple choice fields. You can do check boxes just like this. You can do radio buttons or drop down where they can only select one or you can have a multi-pick list like what I have down here where they can still select multiple, it's just not the um, drop down or um, checkbox kind of um, interface. But anyways, that saved me a ton of time. Um, if I wasn't talking through this at least, this would have taken probably about 30 seconds to fill out. All the information's updated, captured some new information as well. I'm gonna go ahead and hit send. And then we get this little pop-up saying, thank you for your submission. You can customize this message. You could also instead have them redirected to a different web page if you'd like to, but it's super easy, clean, awesome experience for your patients, for your clients, for your leads, your students, whoever you happen to be working, maybe employees, staff, anything like that you're working with. So that's it in action. I do also have this set up to where their reason for today's visit is also going to automatically create a case inside of Salesforce with that as the subject line. So whoever internally knows that case is theirs, they know what it's about, they can kind of follow suit accordingly. So I have two different objects here, all connected, starting off this workflow from just quick update of their information, hitting send. So let's show you how to actually access or build this on your own. Now, what we'll see, is this is, as I briefly mentioned earlier, a completely native for, uh, Salesforce application. This means to access and use Formstack for Salesforce, you don't have to go to formstack.com. You don't have to go elsewhere. You can access everything you need right from inside of Salesforce. And if you're not familiar with how to access different applications inside of Salesforce, you're just gonna log into Salesforce, probably not seeing this view immediately, but you will see in the very top left, this little waffle bar, these nine little bubbles in the top left. If you click on this, you'll see this is your app launcher. You can search for different applications in your Salesforce organization right from here. You're gonna simply search for Formstack. If you don't see Formstack here, it just means you haven't installed it quite yet. We're not gonna walk you through the installation steps here today, but you can check out our knowledge base or some of the other resources we send you with the recap email for instructions on how to get that set up. But search for Formstack, you're gonna see it's right here, not Formstack documents. It's a different application of ours. We're not walking through that today, though I do highly recommend it if you're a documents uh, subscriber of ours. Select Formstack and it'll take you here to this Formstack for Salesforce application. Um, now you're gonna see a few different things here from this page. I'm gonna very briefly show you what these different pieces are before we show how to build your own form. Now, first thing from this dashboard, you're gonna see in the very top left, I'm gonna work somewhat clockwise. We're gonna see the submission dashboard up at the very top. Every form that you've already created and had filled out by anybody, you can go to the submission dashboard and see all of those submissions right from there. Now. One of the benefits of this, since this is already a native Salesforce um, application, we're just borrowing your Salesforce infrastructure, meaning the objects that you already have created inside of Salesforce, the record types, record fields, all of that stuff, we're just borrowing how your Salesforce is already configured. Meaning if you have these forums connected to an account or an intake, or a family, a specific location, opportunities, anything like that, you can have this connected to any one of those. Another quick side note, account, um, opportunity, contacts, those are what Salesforce would refer to as objects. That's a specific type of, of object that you can point to. A record would be a specific um, record within that. So contact, for example, might be the primary object type that I want to point to. Andrew Mastin, if I have my own record inside of there, my own contact is one of those contacts, that would be a unique record within there. So just a quick
quick highlight for anyone that's relatively new to Salesforce. Uh, so anyways, all that to say here, the submission dashboard, you can access stuff for these forms, but we're also automatically updating those corresponding records anyways. So you might not need your submission dashboard often unless you suspect maybe there's an error, maybe you got an email saying, hey, this didn't update quite right. Typically that's because something inside of Salesforce in your organization changed and you just need to update or refresh the form very quickly. But that's a really quick way of you being able to go in and see that and you can kind of make those changes accordingly. You're also going to see within each of these forms, I know I'm skipping a little out of order, but any form you've already created is gonna be down here in the body of this. And what you can do is actually access these submissions for that specific form right from here too, just by clicking on submission. So two different locations, you can access submissions. One is gonna be all of the forms. These are gonna be unique to that specific form, but you do have two different ways of accessing that outside of just the, the object itself or the record itself. Now, going back to our clockwise motion, <laughs> here in the top right, we have our admin settings. This is where you can manage users, and this is not managing Salesforce users. This is managing form stack for Salesforce users. Anyone that you designate within your Salesforce organization can be a form stack um, for Salesforce user, assuming you've purchased enough users for that or enough licenses for that. But that's where you can manage who has access to actually build forms, access the submission dashboard, things like that. Uh, this is not any indication though of who can fill out a form. Anybody you send one of these form links to, or uh, if you have it embedded on your website, any, anybody can go in and fill that out. They don't have to be a form stack for Salesforce user to um, be able to fill out that form. You're also gonna see next to that, this little blue question mark. This question mark is probably going to be your best friend, especially because again, I'm talking very, very quickly uh, today. So if you click on this, you're gonna see a few things. First, are there any announcements, any key updates that you should be aware of with Formstack? You can click on this right here, check those out. You can access our knowledge base. So all these resources that Ryan mentioned, the resources we're going to send you and briefly review at the end of today's um, webinar, you can access all of those right from here at our knowledge base. In fact, as you're going through this, if you have other questions, maybe it's something we didn't cover, I would still check this out. Click on this little link right here, search for whatever you're trying to accomplish. Odds are we probably have a resource with screenshots guiding you through that exact thing. If you ever get stuck, maybe there's a technical issue or you're just not sure why something might not be working quite right, submit a support ticket. Right from here, seven days a week, our support team is working on it. They'll usually get back to you within about a business day. And um, yeah, they're, they're absolutely amazing. And lastly, share feedback. If there's anything that's missing or you wish was different with this product, we do review every single piece of feedback and we do plan our um, initiatives every single quarter accordingly. So be sure, please give us feedback. We do go through all of that. So again, this question mark here, oops, didn't mean to click on it. Question mark here in the very top right, probably going to be your best friend as you're going through all of this. Continuing down, I already showed you, you can access any of your existing forms here in the body of this um, dashboard. I can also search for them if you have a large amount of forms. You can quickly search for them right from here and then pull up just those forms that you'd like. And also change the order if you want to alphabetize or, most, or uh, last created date. Um, instead, you can easily do all of that. Then within the forms themselves, again, these are existing forms. These are not, um, these have already been created or assuming you've already created some forms. You can see you can actually deactivate the form here to the left-hand side if you'd like to. If you're in a sandbox environment like I am, we do support the ability to have sandbox and production environments. You can build it in the sandbox environment and then migrate it or publish it into your production environment. I can easily migrate it here um, with that. I can edit an existing form, which will take you to the exact same form builder we're gonna start on here in just a moment when we create a brand new form. I can duplicate an existing form. So if it's maybe I have a patient intake, but it's for a different location, I want them to have their own unique form. Great, I could duplicate that right from here. Make a couple tweaks, save yourself a bunch of time. Preview, uh, preview the form itself and then delete it. Now proceed with extreme caution if you delete a form uh, because, well, it's then, gone for everybody that you may have sent the link out to. So extreme caution with uh, anytime you delete a form. 
So that's the form dashboard. I guess with that, let's go through and show you how to actually build a form here. So that's going to be the final button here. It's create a new form. So we're going to go ahead and click on this to get started. And we're going to see we can title this form anything you'd like. Best practice, just make sure it's consistent with your own organization's naming conventions. You want to be able to see the title of this and know exactly what was what purpose this form has or, or where it's supposed to go. So if this one, I'm just going to say update medical records. If it's a specific location or a specific object, anything that's really key, maybe put that in the form name for your reference as well. And then we want to make sure we structure this form so that way it's pointing where it needs to point. It's updating the proper contacts or accounts whatever object it needs to um, point to. So we can set a primary object. This is gonna be the, the primary thing that we want to update here. Uh, again, it could be account if you'd like to. Um, if you're maybe in the software or tech space, uh, it could be family if you're maybe in nonprofit or hospital uh, or medical space. Um, any object you want to be the primary source of truth for this that's being updated or pulling information from. We could easily do accounts for that. And then you'll notice here with this legend, we also support child and grandchild objects. Now, if you're again, not familiar with that language with Salesforce, basically you can have your primary object. Um, we'll say account here for this brief example. And then within a specific account, I have a bunch of different contacts associated with that account. Those contacts are the child object of the account itself, or I could also do this with um, well, any number of things. So if I select related object here, I could then type in contact. Quick side note, we do support lookup objects and lookup fields. Not getting into that today, but if you are Salesforce savvy, you can easily add those into here too. But if I type in contact, I'm going to see immediately child is already a section here. I can select contact and done. It is now a child object, so I can pull in and point back to um, accounts and contacts, and I can even do grandchild objects. If I want account, contact, and then a case fired off with that, great. I can add another related object here, and we'll say case, and we'll see it is a child of the contact. Um, last item here, well, you can delete any of these two if you want to change it. We do also support repeating objects. So if it's um, like a family, for example, and you want them to be able to add each one of their children, it's an account, you want them to add each one of their contacts or each one of their products that they're inquiring about, you can check this box here and make that a repeating object. So for this example, I'm actually gonna change this. We're gonna have contact as the primary object and the related object is going to be a case. I can scroll down, select that, or again, type that in and then click create here in the very top right. Now, it may take just a second to create this. It depends on how complex your Salesforce org is, as well as your internet connection um, or your browser, if it's super outdated. If you haven't restarted your computer in about a month, that may also be a small factor, but um, it should just take, um, I'd say 10 to 15 seconds tops. But then this is gonna take you into our form builder. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, this is the exact same form builder that you'd see if you're editing an existing form. Same interface, all of that difference is obviously we're starting from scratch as opposed to working with an existing form. And before I start building the form, I do quickly wanna highlight here in the very top right the form settings. If at any point you need to change which objects you're pointing towards, maybe you have it pointing towards uh, contact and case, but instead you want it to be account and contact, you can change the objects right from here if you'd like to, as well as update the form name. Just proceed again with extreme caution before updating your, your objects because... Um, even though a field may have the same name as, um, as a different object. So for example, contact records, I may have first and last name on the contact record, but if account also has first and last name, while they may be labeled the same to you, they're actually completely different fields inside of Salesforce. So um, you would have to rebuild a decent amount of that form, depending on how big that is. So again, Proceed with caution here before you get too far building the storm. Make sure you know exactly which objects you have this pointing towards. But you can make adjustments from here. Uh, from the form settings page, you can also change, do I want it to say send here at the bottom when people actually submit the form? Or instead, do you want it to say submit or send me my quote? 
anything along those lines. You can change that pop-up message after they've submitted it, redirect them elsewhere if you'd like to, as well as a few other things that we're not going to stress about here today, um, except uh, anyone that's a little bit more advanced or you have some savvy um, tech people on your side. Sorry, I just realized my lighting was going nuts. We have uh, storms rolling through, so everything's all over the place. Uh, but we do allow you to add your own custom JavaScript code, as well as CSS. CSS is going to be in a different spot. So you can do that. You can add JavaScript code. Just proceed with caution. It's one of those where you can do it. We, we allow you to do it, but we can't really advise you on how to do it. We can't troubleshoot that for you because it's so custom. So same deal. JavaScript is there as an option. Just proceed with caution at your own risk if you want to do that. So those are the form settings in short. Let's get to the actual uh, meat of the form, if you will. So we have edit form is the very first tab that pops up. We'll also get into these next two here in just a moment. But what we see, this is a live preview of the form structure. This is not a live preview of what the end user is necessarily going to see because this isn't gonna bring in the styling and all of that stuff. This is just form structure. I can see that right from here. And by default, we add in a single section for you. And then whatever required field your Salesforce um, requires, I should say, um, for your primary object. What that means is um, for my sandbox environment here that I'm using, in order to save a contact as a record, you have to have a last name. That's how I have it configured for you. It may be more fields than that. But because of that, it automatically brings in last name as a required field here. You can make more fields required. I'm gonna show you how you can bring those in. You can make them required, but that's why you might be seeing some of these. Now, if you wanna change any of these elements of this form, I can drag and drop things, or before I do that, you're also gonna notice for each one of these form elements, a little carrot off to the right-hand side. So like new section title, that's probably a really ugly look for whoever's filling out the form. So I wanna change that. We're gonna click on this little carrot here. And this is where I can change the label of this section. For this one, we're going to say patient information and close that. Now, if I do this for last name or any of these other fields, you're going to see the options change based on what element this is or, or what type of field maybe this is. So instead of last name, maybe I want to say patient last name or surname. You can change this to whatever you'd like. That's not going to change where it's going back into Salesforce. You're going to see, I mentioned, um, Salesforce has its own unique backend names for these. You see that what that name is here, that API name. Don't stress about that at the moment, though. Uh, if you want to input a default value for any of these, you can do so. Uh, maybe it's a specific location. I want to have that set as the default, but they could change that. Great. Um, placeholder text. I mentioned doing that for phone number. We had that for uh, the, the case subject, reason for visit, right? We could easily do that. We can also hide fields by default and have them shown. We did that on the end for or the uh, example form. You can make these read only, and you can also change whether they're required unless... Salesforce already requires the field. In that case, it's always required. We can't change that. That's, again, dependent on your Salesforce structure. Uh, last couple of options down here. We also have the ability to, um, or these advanced options. You can, you can um, check this box, refresh the field if you need to. I wouldn't stress about that too much. Basically, if you update a, a record inside of Salesforce and the field type changes or is gone, anything like that, our form's not going to automatically detect that. So you will want to come in here and just refresh that field very quickly. This is how you do that just to make sure everything's working properly. And then update existing Salesforce record. I'm going to get to that in just a moment. We will come back to that. But if you're Salesforce savvy, that's our upsert field that we're working with right there. So those are some of the different options you might see, but we need to bring in more fields here into the body of this form. Last name is not nearly enough. So what we'll see on the right hand side are the different objects we can pull these records from. So if I want more information for that contact for this patient or, or for this lead, I can click on contact here to the right hand side and see all of the different Salesforce fields. I can bring in. And again, these are just your fields that are already built into your Salesforce organization. So if I want to bring in first name, for example, I'll see first name here. I can drag this in. And as I do, you'll see I now get these blue dotted lines for where I can 
drop this specific field. If you didn't want to drop it here, good news, it's still drag and drop. I can pick it up, move it right above last name, and now I have first name, then last name there. However, first name is not a required field at the moment. Let's change that. I'm going to click on this little carrot, as we already saw. I'm going to check to make it a required field here. And now we have this little asterisk pops up just showing it's now a required field. They will not be able to submit this form unless they add that uh, or fill in that field. Uh, we can do a few other things. Let's see. We'll bring in email address. You can bring in phone number. I'm going to, for the sake of time, not bring in much. However, I do want their allergy information. So we're going to go ahead and bring in um, what reaction they have and then what their listed food allergies are. So what's, what foods trigger that allergy? That's what I wanna know, and what is the reaction that they experience? That's exactly what I wanna know here for this contact object. Now for that, listed food allergies, this is just a standard text field, just like first name, last name, email address. That's how Salesforce has it configured. So we're gonna see these options here are pretty much the exact same. However, if we get to food reaction, we want to know um, what the reactions are. My Salesforce setup already has these set up as a multiple choice option. So we see these options that I see within that carrot are now different. And you can change these as well. So instead of a multi-select pick list, maybe I want to change this to a checkbox. I can say, change display as here. And we could say checkbox list. Done. We now see it's a standard checkbox, check box, sorry, I keep saying checks. I've, I've been eating that cereal a lot lately. It's delicious. But anyways, um, this is where you can change what that interface um, or what the field layout looks like. There we go. And if it's a required field, um, what I'd also like to do, though, I actually don't want either of these two fields to show up until they tell me if they even have allergies, just to keep it nice and a better experience for whoever that end user is so if you'd like to do that you're going to go ahead and hide it as the default so we'll go ahead check this box here to hide the field and you'll see that label is now still there however it's now grayed out i also want to change it for food reaction that's meaningful to me on the back end that might not be meaningful to the end patient or, or lead whoever this is so we're going to change this to say um what reaction do you have to these foods and so when they're filling out this form, that's what they're going to see. What reaction do you have? But back end, it's still saving to that food reaction um, field inside of Salesforce. So we'll do the same thing for listed food allergies. I want to hide this by default. And we'll say, what foods are, what is, are the patient allergic to? Forgive me uh, in my grammar. I don't know if that's supposed to be R or is. Please don't. Um, Attack me too much in the comments for that. So, so we have those in there very simply. If I want to change and add some um, fields from a different object, so if I do want this to trigger a case as well, if they fill out this form, you'll see again different objects here to the left hand side, or sorry, right hand side. And if you're already in one, just click on this blue arrow, change which object you can you're selecting. So I'm going to select case here, and if I want subject. See, scroll down, I have subject here. I'll bring in subject. But again, subject, that doesn't mean anything to the patient that's filling out this information. So I want to change this label. We're going to click on this little carrot. I want the subject to be their reason for a visit. So we're going to say reason for visit. And I don't necessarily want a default value, but I do want some placeholder text so they know they need to explain in a little bit more detail why are they reaching out. So um, IE will say annual checkup, vaccination, etc. And let's also make this a required field. And you'll see here it immediately updates. I can see a quick preview of what this field's behavior is going to be here up at the very top. It's a required field. I see that placeholder text is already there. Super slick um, end user experience for that. Now, last thing I want to do here for this form, again, we're keeping this very, very simple, but I want some sort of indicator as to whether they have allergies or not before it displays these two fields here, right? 
To do that, that's where our general fields come into play. So you'll notice this is this is not a, a standard object, right? We didn't select general fields from our object structure when we were building out this form. It's because general fields, they don't map back to Salesforce. Instead, their primary use case is for building rules, which allow you to show, hide, populate, do different things with this form based on what they select or what they input. Um, so that's the purpose of general fields, not to map back to Salesforce, rather to adjust the form experience itself. Quick little dis or disclaimer with that or asterisk with that, if you will. If you're a document subscriber of ours, you can have general fields mapped into documents. So it's not mapping to Salesforce, but it's still capturing information on a generated document. But I would say for today, don't worry about that just as a back pocket for reference. You can do that with general fields as well. But I'm going to go ahead and go to general fields. And we have several different types of fields you can pick from. Description area, for example, if maybe you want to give a disclaimer or some additional information inside the uh, form itself. That's what a description area is for. It's not going to allow the end user to put anything in the description area. Rather, that's for you to add additional context and information within the form itself. We can do short answer, which is just like the first name, last name fields. It's a very short answer. Um, but city, state, these are all short answer fields. A long answer is going to be like what I have here for reason for today's visit. That's just how my Salesforce had it set up. Uh, home street address was the same kind of thing. That is a large text box just for your reference of what the difference is um, uh, for the end user. Uh, we've already seen what checkboxes look like. Radio buttons, again, look almost the exact same differences. Instead of a box, it's going to be a circle. In fact, I'll show you here. We have these little bubbles, and they can only select one option from these instead of being able to check multiple. Uh, Drop-down list, same kind of function where they can only select one option. Um, However, the interface is just slightly different. They would actually click on this to see what those options are instead of um, the bubble format there. So we'll delete that. Uh, you can add numbers, star ratings, and PS. Um, you can add capture fields, number of different things. The, again, I mentioned none of these general fields map back to Salesforce. The one exception to that, though, is going to be the file upload field. If you need to capture information, maybe have proof of insurance or their ID, maybe it's a referral or another PDF of some sort, maybe it's an employee request, you need a screenshot of something like that for their IT experience, number of different things. If you need that here in the forum and map back to Salesforce, our file uploads do support that. If you bring in a file upload field, um, you're gonna see the general label and all of those options are the same. However, you're going to see some additional options to um, decide where you're saving this file. Do you want it going back to Salesforce files? Do you want instead more legacy kind of formatting? You can do that. Um, do you want some limits around that? All of those are going to be options here for the file upload field. So we'll go ahead. I'm going to delete that. I don't need that for this specific example here. But um, yeah, we brought in a radio button option. So we have this. What I'd like to do is have this. Oh, first in the correct place. We'll move that very quickly. So what I want this to be is I want them to select yes or no for if they have food allergies. And then I want to show these two options based on their selection. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll click on the little carrot here for these radio buttons. And right now, again, the default label is radio buttons. That's garbage for the end users. So let's change that. Does the patient have any known food allergies? So that's what they're seeing from here. Since this is not mapping back to Salesforce, um, well, never mind, that's irrelevant. Uh, we can change the display layout by default. It is going to be vertical, but we can change it so they're side by side, horizontally oriented instead if we'd like to. And then we're gonna see, we can input the values themselves right from here. Now, we can't edit the existing options here. We can, Like it says option one, option two, option three. Again, that's not meaningful uh, for the end user. So uh, the way we will add our desired values for this is we'll actually click on the little X for each of these values, just delete them, and we're gonna add in the ones we'd actually like. So we'll say yes, no, we can say maybe, I have no clue, 
whatever you'd like that to be. And you'll see it does update those options here in the form builder itself. Now, I don't need maybe or I have no clue. We've already said, do we have any known food allergies? So we can just leave it as yes or no. But just as a for reference, that's how you do that. You can also change how it's sorted if you'd like to by A to Z or um, randomized if you have multiple options there. Same deal, you can put in a default value if you'd like to. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it as is so it's unselected. There's no default value, but I do want this to be a required field. They have to acknowledge whether they know if they have allergies or not. So that's done. And as far as the form body goes, this is pretty much done. If you wanna get a little bit more complex, you can add additional sections and even pages if you'd like to. Just scroll to the very bottom of this form. You'll see here, I can add a new section. And just like we titled the earlier one, I can click on this little carrot here, title this anything I'd like to. We'll say um, emergency contact info, for example. And if I want, I can bring in more fields from the right or even some of these fields up top. If I want to drag these into this new section, I can just drag them down to that section and they move accordingly. But I'm going to bring these back. We don't need that for this example. If you want to add a whole new page, exact same process you'll just click add new page here and the interface for this is more or less the exact same you just have the difference of now a whole page title as well as a section title you can just drag different um fields into this uh into the body of this too so i'm going to delete that we don't need the emergency contact info we're going to keep this again short and sweet we have basic contact info allergy info and what's the reason for their visit that's all i need for this specific example now before I publish this, before I start styling this, right now as is, these two fields are just going to remain hidden no matter what. We don't want that. We want these to show based on what they select here, if they select yes. This is where our rules come into play. So this is gonna be the next tab here in the upper left. If I click edit rules, you're gonna see nothing's here by default. But these are where we can say if something's shown or hidden based on other selections or even field values, I can say to populate a different field with or a specific value. Um, you can display error messages. You can do all kinds of things here with rules get very complex if you'd like to. I'm going to, again, keep this pretty simple for the getting started, but we're gonna go ahead and add a new rule to get started. So we can say if all or any of the following is true, this is where we're gonna set specific criteria before the action happens. So if blank happens, then we will do blank. Like that, that's how the structure of this goes. So the if portion of that, you can set multiple criteria. That's where the any or all option comes into play. So for example, if they select this product and this product, then I want to show or populate this kind of field. If they select any one of these options, then I want this action to happen. That's the difference between any and all. For this case, we only have one option. Doesn't matter which of these two I select. I can do any or all, it'll be the same function regardless. But then we're gonna say what item, what's the field that this condition is dependent on. So I'm going to click on this. And we'll see it can be any of the object fields or one of the general fields. I'll scroll down. Here's that general field. Does the patient have a food allergy? That's what I want. And then these uh, options here, we, we're going to see these are actually going to mirror um, Salesforce filters. So if you've built your own reports or list views inside of Salesforce, these options is equal to or is not equal to are going to be the same. So if I do like reason for visit, for example, because that's not multiple choice, you're gonna see the options are now different. I have equal to, is not equal to, contains, doesn't contain, starts with, does not. You're gonna see all those options change here accordingly to align with what you experience inside of Salesforce. So I'm gonna keep this simple. We'll do, does patient have an allergy is equal to, and I can select the item. If this is a checkbox field instead of a um, single choice, like, um, radio button or drop down you will see you can actually select multiple options from here at a time in this case it's a single choice um field type so i'm just going to select yes so if the value is yes they do have allergies then what's the what do i want to happen do i want it to show a field or section hide populate error messages here are all the options you can set for that 
I'm going to show, and just another quick side note, it doesn't just have to be for fields. It can be for whole sections or pages if you want it to. But I will go ahead and say show, and we see again, pages or sections. But in this case, I want it to show the what foods are they allergic to. And I also want it to show what the reaction is. So I'll hit this little plus sign here to the right. We're going to do the same thing, show. And then this one is reaction. So we have both of those fields are now set to show if they select yes from that radio button. You can set as many of these different rules as you'd like to. This is just how to do one in a very basic way. But again, these can get very, very complex if you'd like them to. Now, before I publish this, which you may have noticed here in the top right, it is saving all of these changes as I make them automatically, but it's only saving them as a draft. Nobody, if this is an existing form, anybody that's filling out the form right now will not see the changes I've made until I click publish draft. Before I do that for this example again, I do want to style this form very, very quickly. So this is where the third tab and the final one we're going to talk about here today comes into play. We'll click edit style here. And this is going to be much more of a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get kind of interface, where what we see in this preview is a live preview of exactly what the end user is going to see and experience with this form. Now, you're not going to be able to really fill, well, actually, you can now, never mind. Uh, you can actually type in some of the text and values for this. But to the right-hand side is where you're actually going to edit the aesthetics of this. I recommend as a starting place, start with one of our templates if you don't already have one on hand. Up to the right-hand side, we have this little down arrow. If I click on that, that, or that carrot, you're gonna see several different templates that you can pick and choose from, even if it's just a starting place. Uh, start with any one of them. I like the word duck, I love ducks. Uh, so we could select that if we want to, though that's actually not probably the most aligned with my hospital, so maybe we change that, but anyways. Start with any one of these that you want, and then you can customize the other form elements here to the right-hand side. If I go to form, it's where you can update the padding, the background, if there's any logos for the collective form itself. If I want this form itself to have two or three columns, you can adjust the column alignment here very easily. Um, again, do you want things fixed or centered? If you have any images, you can change padding those things I just mentioned there. That's for the collective form. If I want to edit how the fields look, then I can click on fields. I can change the font. I can change the colors, padding, all of those things again from here. If it's multiple pages, what do the page, what are the differences in the pages? And then any buttons and links that you may have rendered inside of here. Once you have this, oh, sorry, back up real quick. Um, I mentioned briefly earlier, we do allow you to put your own custom CSS into this. If you click edit CSS here in the top right, this is where someone maybe from your marketing or design teams can input that CSS. Again, CSS, very custom nature. We can't support you as you do it, but we can say, here's where you'd add your own. Proceed with caution. Make sure uh, you or someone else knows what they're doing before going and doing that. Another important thing to note is if this form is going to be embedded on your web page, it's actually going to automatically inherit the CSS from whatever that web page is. So you probably don't need to spend very much time here unless you're going to use an iframe for your embed method. But that's, again, a little more technical than we're going to get into today. You do have that option, all that to say here in the top right. Um, once you have this form looking the way you'd like it to, make sure you save it as a custom template because then going forward, if you want to reuse that same template going forward, I can click on this carrot and just select that theme or, or sorry, that template that I've already created. So that hospital one that I already used for this example earlier, I want to reuse that same one. I'll just click hospital because I saved it and done. It's pulling in my logo, my padding, my font, all of my colors, all of that in just a couple clicks. So whatever you do, if you're going to reuse it, make sure you save it as a template. It's going to save you a tremendous amount of time later on. So that is the form builder. In short, we showed how to build the form, set some rules, how to style it. Now we're gonna go ahead, oops, sorry. We're going to, uh, my, my mouse is too fancy for me, clearly. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit publish draft here in the very top right to save all of these, deploy those changes so the end user will experience them. Now, after we publish these, we're gonna see now we can go to our publish options. 
You can access the publish options from our the form dashboard as well, the form stack dashboard. Uh, for any one of those forms without going into edit, you'll see publish options is available there. We're going to go ahead, go to our publish options, see how we can share this out. And just checking, I don't see. All right, Ryan hasn't sent me any notices, so I think we're still doing okay. Uh, we're on the tail end of this. We're going to leave some time for Q&A. But once we go to publish options, we again have a few options for how we can share this form out. The first one you're going to see is standard embed code. This is the one that's going to automatically inherit the CSS for wherever this is embedded on your website. Unless you check to use iframe, in which case it's going to instead use the template or the style that you have input into here. We also have the hosted form. This is just a generic agnostic URL. Anyone that you send this link to or anyone with access to this URL can access this form and fill in their uh, that information. So this, if you're just going to be more of a general marketing blast, you don't need any pre-fill information. Maybe you want this hyperlinked on your website. This is the way to um, share out the form. Now, if you're wanting pre-fill links where you can send out unique URLs to each individual lead, any um, individual employees, patients, this is where we want to turn on our dynamic pre-fills. So we're going to flip the switch here. It's going to configure some things on the back end. So then you're allowed to actually, or our system's going to allow you to generate those pre-fill links. And you can pick which object or objects it's going to pre-fill for. Uh, in this case, I only want it pre-filling for contact, not for case. So I'm going to uncheck that box. And then continuing to scroll down. Oh, I can save that. Actually, let me do that very quickly. But if I scroll down, I now see these other three options, these tabs here are no longer grayed out. I can select them and pick how I want to generate and send out these pre-fill links. What a pre-fill link is going to allow you to do is again, for any one of these records that you choose or any list of records, any new records, depending on what you choose, it's going to generate a unique encrypted URL for that specific person or, or record uh, to where anybody that accesses that unique URL, it's going to automatically pull in their information and it's going to, um, uh, well, just speed up that process, pre-fill that information, save them time. They don't have to re-input all of that info. So if we want to automatically generate pre-fill links, we can do so. If we want to manually generate pre-fill links, we can also do that. We can send out pre-fill links to a list of our choice. We can also export them as a CSV file here to the right-hand side. But if I want them automatically generated, I'm going to go ahead and flip this switch here. Now, in order to do this, you do need a URL field on this object. So we can actually paste this URL to it. So make sure you connect with your Salesforce admin. If you need like a medical records URL, then you wanna go ahead, have your Salesforce admin put in a medical record URL or, or something similar to that on the record. Then you'll select that field from here so we can add that URL to it. So in this case, I'm going to say update record URL. And then we can click this button here to apply this automatically for all new records going forward. Any new record that's created, any new contact that get, gets added to Salesforce, it's going to automatically create that URL for them. I could do that. Just click this button here. You can also pick, a, um, pick some of your existing um, objects or records if you'd like to as well. So from here, I will just select a view. Do I want this to be all records? Do I want it to be just a specific list that I've already created, a specific view? Do I want it just be my records? You can do any of those if you'd like to, and then click update. I'm not doing that right now just because that does take a little bit of time. Uh, but in short, that's our dynamic pre-fill. Again, if you have questions and you get or you get stuck with this, check out our knowledge base. It has awesome instructions walking through a little bit more step-by-step -step on how to get this configured. But that is... I believe everything I had planned for today. My goodness, my lighting went crazy again, didn't it? I'm so sorry. Let's fix that here. Um, so I guess I'll invite Ryan back on and let you do our Q&A. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much again for that, Andrew. We have pretty limited time, so I just want to show off our resources page here. We have our help center uh, that we did mention earlier, but we have our certification program that's also currently free. It's a great tool for learning more about not just forms for Salesforce and making the best use of your plan. Uh, but if you're also interested in exploring one of our other product offerings like Formstack Documents, Formstack Sign, uh, one of those ones, 
And since we are at time, I just want to say thank you all so much for attending. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And once again, this recording, this webinar will be recorded and sent out over the next 24 hours. All right. Take care.